So in this video, I'm looking at how we can add SSH access to our domain client machines. So I've got Ubuntu here and also a Windows Server, and we're going to SSH from the Windows Server into the Ubuntu machine using a domain account. Hi, I'm Matt. Welcome to Crazy Logic. So SSH is the Linux equivalent of, well, Telnet, um, but it's not exactly equivalent. It's it's different. Um, it's much more secure. So it's essentially how you would access remote command line in a in a Linux machine if you're not familiar with that. By default, it's not installed with Ubuntu. So if uh, if we jump into this server quickly, if I go SSH, so the SSH client is included with Windows now. Um, so SSH, and then I go to this uh, machine DNS name, uh, which is .domain .local. You should see that it will refuse, but I can also ping it just to make sure we've actually got connectivity, which is great. So what we need to do is jump over to our um, Linux machine. I'm logged in as Dave, our local administrator, and um, I'm going to install the open SSH server. So sudo apt install uh, open SSH dash server. So we'll do that. Great, so that's installed. It should also be running. So we can do a system control status SSH. So there we go, you can see, so system control status SSH.service. And you can see that it's running. Uh, which is great, so we'll close that down. So now if we go back and try and remote in, it'll ask us whether we want to accept that certificate, which in this case we do. Let's try logging in with the Dave account. So this is using a local account. So we would expect this to let us in. So I'll put in the password, and now we are in as Dave. We can do a who am I, and it says that I am Dave. So we can close this connection, or we can exit and we're back to our Windows terminal. So user one is a domain account. So here what we can do is we can go user one at machine.domain.local. Last me for the password and I am in. So who am who am I? I'm user one. Now this is all fine and dandy. So I've now got access to uh, to the machine via SSH. So if I go back over to this machine and I look in the SSSD configuration, you can see that this is the fully qualified domain names are set to off or false. So if I set this to true, and then I reboot this machine, so machine's back online, uh, doing its thing. But now if we go back to uh, try and remote access in, we should get this failing because we have disabled this user um, from logging on as a local user. So uh, I'll cancel that for a second. So the way we get around this is it's a bit like the logon process within uh, Ubuntu after uh, adding these components. So it's user1 at domain.local at the machine name top domain dot local so let me explain what's going on here so essentially the user one at domain dot local is the is the user account and then we're doing at the host so this last at separates the user from the host so you button 21 dash 04 dot domain dot local is my DNS uh, host name I could also use the IP address here rather than the um, the DNS name the IP address is I think it was up here somewhere 1.11. I'll log on as this first and then we will I'll show you with the IP address. It's exactly the same, so password. So I'm logged in as the user one at domain.local, which is my fully qualified domain name um, for my user account. Uh, and I'm at that machine. So that's how you would log on if you've got the fully qualified domain names set to true. So if you've got multiple domains uh, that are linked or trusted, then you have uh, that is how you get around it. So if I close this down, if I now show you using the IP address, just to confirm that it works this way as well, you can see that I can log in with the IP address as well. So who who am I? 
but I'm using one at the main local. There we go. So once you've got access um, available for remote users, you may want to restrict that access down, which might be sensible. Um, it's a bit more complicated than you might think uh, to do this. There's a lot of gotchas and a lot of tweaks that you're going to have to do if you've got something non-standard. So the first thing I'm going to uh, say is I've already added a group to AD called Linux SSH and I've added my user one to this group. So if I go over to my Linux box and I go groups uh, user one, you can see that my user one appears to be a member of this Linux SSH group. That's important because if you have cache credentials, that may not be the case. So we're in a default situation, so I can SSH in as user one uh, at Ubuntu 21-04. I've got fully qualified name names turned off for the time being. So you can see I'm able to log in as user one and oh, I need to exit. I should also be able to do that as Dave, which is our local administrator. So there we go, logged in as Dave. Not sure what happened there, I just had to restart SSHD, wasn't letting me in. Um, so yeah, lo local user and domain user can both access this machine by default. So the default policy is that anyone can access it. So to edit this, we need to edit a file, which is in itsy ssh ssh underscore config. So I'll just edit that using nano. And then down at the bottom, I have added a section. So uh, the default is for allowing all groups. This information is in the man pages, by the way. Uh, and then you've got some uh, deny users, allow users, deny groups, allow groups that you can use to restrict and deny access. Now, I found that where, these, where you want both users from AD and also from the local machine to have access, you actually need to have multiple groups. One for the local machine access and one for the remote access. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict access just so that Dave can access it. So one local user, no uh, no groups, etc. from either the machine or the domain. So I've edited the file, so now I need to restart the SSHD service using system control. So I'll do that. So now I should be able to log in as Dave, which I can, but not as user one. Which is the behavior we would expect from that configuration. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to not allow the user Dave, I'm, but I'm going to allow groups uh, Linux SSH, which is our AD group that we've added user one to. So we'll write that out, and then we'll restart the service, and then we should find that Dave doesn't have access, which is what we expect, but user one does have access, which is what we would expect. So now if we want to add Dave back in as a uh, as a local user account that has access to SSH, what we need to do is we need to create a local group. So a group that's just on that machine. So you use sudo group add and then name of the group. So I've already created this group, so I'll say that I've already got that one. And um, what you can do is you can then add the user to that group. So to add a user, you can sudo mod, well, user mod dash a, which is append that's big G, which means add it to a group without removing all the other groups. Then you need the name of the group, and then the name of the user. And then if you want to double check that that user is in that group, you can do grep, and then the name of the group, and then it's a uh, group. And it will tell you the group exists, and that Dave is a member of that group. So now what we can do is we can go back to our uh, SSHD config file and then in allow groups we can add that secondary local group. Now when you have multiple groups you just separate them by space this is why putting a space in the name of the group in AD can cause issues uh, just don't if you can just avoid it so we'll write that out 
restart SSH the service and now we should find that both user 1 has access and also that Dave has access which is what we want so it's a bit finicky to have to do it in both places at the same time but that that's what you have to do if you want to get it working on Ubuntu so that's how you can restrict access down to uh, groups that are controllable either on the local machine or in Active Directory. Um, I haven't got it working with, with explicit users and groups at the same time. I'm not sure why it doesn't work. It, it just doesn't seem to work for me and other people have similar issues when trying to ha add a domain group when they have other configurations in place. So if you can, just local group and a remote group and then just add users to groups which is a much better security model anyway so anyway I hope this has been helpful and it shows that um, well you can access SSH using domain users to a domain client that is Linux and you can control it using AD which is what you would want if you're an administrator so anyway hope this has been helpful and thanks for watching